catches, puts up the three. Long go, rebound box. Now head over in this direction. On the three. For three, puts it in. Bridges. Oh my God! Oh, what? Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. Curry way down to bang, bang. We are back. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Cam's Corner. Today we got a three-time state champion out of Rhode Island, out of Bishop Hendrickson High School. Guys, give it up for Bobby Fiorito. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's happening, Cam? What's going on, my guy? How you been? Chilling, man. Chilling, man. Same old. Yeah. Have you been hooping lately or no? Yeah, yeah I've been man. hooping, but my back's been messed up, yo. Really? Yeah, that's why I was just at physical therapy this morning. Um, My L5's, like, turned in, and then my left hip's, like, turned out. I'm trying to get through that, whatever, right now. But I'm just really – we start practice, first day of practice, 4 o'clock today on the dot. We're going to get into all that good stuff soon. But, um, you know, to first start off, um, I know you're playing at Johnson & Wales right now. But uh, for the people that, like, don't know your background, where did uh, basketball, like, really start for you? Uh, basketball really started coming from my dad. I mean, he played uh, all the way growing up through high school. All his friends, man, they've really been telling me how great of a basketball player he was, but uh, he, tried to, he tried to really put in me what he couldn't do with himself because he messed up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he kind of just passed on the dream to me, and I've just been kind of doing it since I was probably, like, three years old, since I could touch a basketball, really. Yeah, I feel that because, like, every day for me, like, growing up, I'd be in the gym every day with my dad. You know what I mean? I mean, he was, he was more of a hockey player, but, like, in the sense of he still wanted his kid to – play a exactly. sport and you know carry on that legacy and not lose that like passion that he had so I yeah. I definitely feel that definitely. but uh, what era what era of basketball did you like really grow up in and uh like who did you always kind of like shape your game around like at the early stages um honestly my first player I really tried to shape my game around was Rondo when I was younger he was playing on the Celtics when they won in like 08 mm -hmm. and everything um I was really I really liked how he was playing and everything especially coming out of Kentucky being athletic and everything how he was he used to be catching bodies and everyone dunking on everyone and stuff, but I always loved the way he passed the ball. And I kind of always trying to model my game after that. Like I, I remember I, I tried to like do that behind the back fake. Yeah. yeah. The, so I started doing that. I started doing that in like fourth grade mm. and refs, I would be in like CYO and refs would always be calling it a travel, like always because really? they, they'd never seen like a, a young kid do that, like that type of move. Yeah. I just because I was modeling my game after, like I, I really like worked on stuff like that. Like I, I knew I was able to do it. I don't know, but did you still get those calls, like you know, going into like middle school and uh, high school? And yeah, stuff like no, that? I actually did. Like even even moves like as simple as like a spin move, just as quick as it's just because I would do it so quick. Right, we weren't used to younger kids doing moves like that. Mm. Like honestly, like the majority of my team probably couldn't even dribble a basketball at the time. Like, are you back? You oh, know, yeah. back Yo, that's why I was like, I mean, I understood why I was getting those calls, but I mean, as a little kid, you know, you're frustrated and everything. Like, come on, why? why no, right. All of that, but but like yeah. the kids, like nowadays, like um, probably like a year ago or like two years ago, I used to do like uh, it was like third, fourth graders, fifth grade, like ref like those games, and like yeah. kids aren't doing those kinds of moves, so it, it is uh -huh. like it's I think you know for you to do that stuff like at that age there's a couple there's probably like maybe like one or two kids that like can actually like play yeah, no, and do exactly. that kind of stuff in each game and everything yep. and they never get those calls so like it's you know I, I know what you're coming from um but did you play any other sports besides uh basketball uh, I grew up playing basketball and football um honestly I wish I did keep playing football a little bit too um I played football all the way up until my freshman year in high school um but I played quarterback and running back for basically all my years. And then I, I just decided to stay with basketball after my freshman year, just to, just I started realizing that, yeah, basketball is really what I wanted to do always. It was always my number one sport and everything, but I just, I don't know what it really was, but something just kind of like clicked to me after winning that like first championship my freshman year with the team, just kind of like, nah, this is what I want to do. Just, just focus on basketball. 
Right. So like where where did you live like at the time of like middle school and like how was like playing ball like over there? Like so middle school, I actually went to um PCD, Providence mm-hmm. Country Day. And that was like a tough kind of like transition. There was like a it was like a small amount of kids in my class. I probably had 12 kids in my sixth grade class, like 14 kids in my sixth grade class. Wow. My whole middle school graduate, like my middle school in eighth grade when I graduated, we probably have 50 kids in the whole middle school. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it was kind so of there was, like, there was there like a basketball program and stuff. No, like there that, was, it, was, it was there was a basketball program. It was kind of like an A and B. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it was was I made a team as like a as a sixth grader. I played. I started as a sixth grader and everything. We played against like a a lot of honestly like a lot of like younger prep school kind of kind of teams and everything, like Rocky Hill, Wheeler, all the old schools like that. Um, Moses Brown. But um, then I kind of just worked my way up until when I was in eighth grade. They gave me the chance to play varsity as an eighth grader. Um. And I played eighth grade. I played with them like probably a couple tournaments and everything. But then there was like something going on with my eligibility. They were going to say like, if I continued to play like in real games, I wasn't going to be eligible for my last year of high school or something like that. It ended up coming into like an eligibility kind of thing. Yeah. Even with, with uh, Providence Rec League, they tried to not let me play in Rec League at the same time when I was playing high school as really? an eighth grader. Yeah, they were they were trying to like get me kicked out of games and everything back yeah. then. But they, they tried to say that they tried to use that against me all the way until my junior year of high school. Really? Like, it's, yeah. But I was like, it was never it was never an eligibility. Pro- I just kind of like obviously I had to push it to the side. It was never an eligibility problem. I played in probably a couple tournaments, Christmas tournaments with them and everything. Just practice with them, kind of just got the experience and everything. But uh, then moved on to high school when I got in high school. Yeah, because it, it's been like that for like AAU, too. Like if. um if a certain player is like way better than his like uh, age group, it's like, they're like, is he really eligible to play it? Like, you know what I mean? They're always asking. Uh, exactly. but. Yeah. That's, that's what it was too. AAU really kind of shaped my, that's what really shaped my whole basketball growing up was um, I started with the Rhode Island breakers when I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. Really? That's really what it was. They didn't even have an age group back for me. Um, For me back then I was playing with the fourth grade and I was in second grade. That was, wow. that was, that was considered my age group was the fourth grade. That was the team that I was on, and then I would play up, and that was the sixth grade. So now I was yeah. playing like up with sixth grade. They took me to na- I went to nationals with them and everything. I kind of like was uh just taken under like the older guys' wings and everything. That's really what shaped my basketball, like my whole uh, IQ and game and everything, though know, for sure. Yeah, what kind of uh, like AAU programs were you like into um, before high school? Um, before high school, I was playing with uh the Rhode Island Breakers. I was playing with uh crush for a little bit i was playing with expressions um i mean i had a great time in aau obviously i'd recommend it and everything but um yeah. went to nationals seventh grade eighth grade we qualified um but we didn't end up going and then ninth grade I continued to just play AAU, but uh, I kind of just played local. I played again with Rhode Island Crush and everything. I was kind of just focusing on my high school basketball for the most part, uh, coming out of Hendrickson. Yeah, so but, like uh, playing for those teams and stuff like that, and like in middle school, uh, how did you know that you wanted to go? Did you go? Did you play at any school before Hendrickson, like before your freshman year, or like you were at Hendrickson all four years? So yeah, so what it was, I actually was supposed to. Um, I was in contact with Coach Hart and everything at St. Andrews. Mm-hmm. That's what I was. That was my original plan uh that didn't work out over there uh kind of like a money situation and everything yeah you know there's over there right. preps and stuff but um I ended up I was with expressions at the time uh coach Jim Black said to me you know Preston Santos over here with you from expressions why don't you just go play with him at uh at Hendrickin? and that really never clicked in my mind I applied to Hendrickin in April of my eighth grade year I didn't even like I I didn't even think St. Andrews was really my only choice. If yeah. not, I really thought I was going to stay at PCD for at least like a year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Hendrickson came into the option. I always knew Jamal Gomes was like a great coach and everything. I went to his basketball camps when I was younger. So uh, he kind of had an idea who I was. I went in as a freshman and uh, started playing varsity with the varsity team uh, summer league right off the back and right June. off rip right yeah yeah right off rip I was playing summer league with them I remember coming in playing against LaSalle my first game 
um, I got a bucket and he finally like saw what I could do. Like, all right, this kid can play at this level a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, that was basically it. St. Andrews was my first option though. Um, like I, I really could have went to prep school too, probably after my sophomore year, I had the chance to, but I declined that. Wanted to just stay at Hendrickin for the most part. Not right. What was, um, what was like your first taste of like playing freshman? Like I know you said you played LaSalle, you got that bucket and it was like, did, did a lot of um, more so like media and people in like school, um, they kind of got to know your name. Was it like, kind of like, uh, not like, like nerve, like nerve wracking, but like, yeah, you, yeah. did you feel pressured to like play better already at the freshman level? Oh, I was, I definitely felt some pressure coming in, especially as like a younger guy, but um, for the most part, I used my freshman year basically as like a learning experience. Um, I actually, I got a lot of burn, uh, but I was mostly like playing under Kyle Hensler mm -hmm. uh, and Justin Missoula and everything. Right. I mean, those are great guards. Uh, they kind of just took me under their wing and uh, Coach Gomes and everyone just kind of just brought me into the system, wanted to develop me for that year uh, and help, help them out as much as I could that year, but uh, just develop me for the, the rest of the years coming. Yeah, it must have been dope playing with like Justin and those oh, kinds of guys. You know what I mean? I, I, I talked to him some time with Justin uh, my sophomore year as well. We got a good year that year, his senior year, and everyone. But um, I've actually I know Justin since we were probably in second grade. Actually, that was one of my first encounters with basketball with Justin. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. Like full circle, everything comes around because I was so close with you know his dad. He was my coach for seven years. Um. I, I talk, was able to talk to Joey for my first like episode for the podcast yep, yep. and then I got in contact with Justin. So it was definitely cool to talk to them. But um, when I had them on, like also someone like Angel, who was your teammate, mm -hmm. um, Nick and Tom are like my good friends. They went to Hendrick and played football there. Uh, what was it like when you were in, uh, you were like the younger guy, like freshman, sophomore, walking around and seeing these athletes like Quiddy Pay and like, you know, other athletes as well, because yeah. like at the time you didn't really know um, that you were going to be like a, you know, you're going to be around all these D1 athletes or they were going to be D1. So like, exactly. what was that kind of like for you? I mean, it's kind of like uh, more eye opening because you see like uh, all these people kind of on their own path. Everyone at Hendrick and for the most part, a lot of the kids I was surrounded by were athletes. Right. Um, even kids in my class playing baseball, playing soccer, playing football, basketball. I mean, you kind of all just um, if that's what you did as a sport. I kind of saw you as a someone that I could learn from and kind of like, all right, this is making me want to be on that path too. So I can strive and I can get to a school or I can get a scholarship. I can play college basketball, just like how we see, you know, Quiddy went to Michigan everywhere. Right. That's all inspirational stuff, especially like you see him get picked for the all American game. And it's like, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like talking wow. to Angel, he was like on draft night. It, he was like speechless just watching it. Like, I was watching it too, but it was obviously different for me. I didn't go to school with them. I didn't, you know, obviously go to Hendrickin. But now, if like, kind of for us, like David Duke is kind of like that. You know what I mean? He's at, he's with yep. Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. Like, because I've been trying to get in contact with him. I've been talking to uh, Calvin over at Camp Arrow and kind of yep, get yep. in contact a little bit with him. But it's a process. But hopefully, you know, one day I'll get him on. No, yeah. Shout out to David too, man, because he's doing yeah. his doing his thing man I, I didn't know I didn't know he was like on the full roster I thought it was like more of like yeah. summer league and then he'd play like G, I like seeing him yeah, in the preseason it's kind of surreal and every, exactly that's what I was saying I'm happy to see him doing his thing and everything um uh, he developed man he did what he yeah. had to sure because I've been playing with him probably same and same since same age as Justin since we were young but um I, nah, that's crazy I'm glad he's doing his thing yeah, what was it like playing with him, like, at the early stages, too? He was, so, he really was – he really was always long and lanky. Like, he always had that – um, like, that athleticism and everyone. Right. Everyone, like, he was always going to be – he was always going to be a decent basketball player for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I'm pretty sure he started off playing soccer for the most part, he'll tell you. Him and – Really? And, yeah, him and Sean started off – they played soccer for a while and took that serious. Um. But then uh, as we got into middle school and everything, they, they took basketball serious. But I feel like David – David really didn't even sprout sprout until his junior year, sophomore, junior year of high school when he was at mm. class. Yeah. Cause I remember seeing him, like I went to Camp Arrow a couple of times and he wasn't there, but my last year that I did it, I think maybe it might've been like my freshman year, mm -hmm. him, Cole Swider were there. And I was like, I, I knew who they were, but I was like, they didn't have that big of a name yet. Like they were going where Cole went to Villanova first and now he's at Syracuse. And then David went to PC 
mm-hmm. but um now looking back at it like the picture like the whole group picture is like damn like it's pretty yeah. crazy how where they're at now um let's see uh as far as you go um how did you decide you know going back to like football you said that you played um up to a freshman year how did you decide that you wanted to like stop playing football and like just mainly focus on basketball honestly I really think it was that first championship and then like seeing uh seeing like what I could really do with basketball kind of just like being being open to the to the market of like all right yeah I could go here I could end up here I could bring basketball to this to this point in life I could try and make it overseas I could try and do this I mean it was kind of always like a um that's what I wanted to do since I was younger. Football was always my second sport, even though I did have a have a strong love for that. Um, it was kind of just that first championship that really like fueled me like, nah, this this felt good. I want to win here again next year. Let me focus on that. Mm-hmm. I want to win here all my years, which so I should have. But <laughs> yeah. So you won three. Uh, was it yeah. was your freshman, your sophomore, and your junior or your senior? Yeah, yeah, freshman, sophomore, and junior. You know, now that you're in the system, like your freshman year, the, the coaches, you know, after winning that championship too, did the coaches, like I said earlier, expect a lot more from you now yeah. that, like, how was that kind of like, like how yeah, was so, coaching and practicing? Like? I mean, I remember we were at a, um, probably our like ring ceremony, like little thing we had for for the whole team, little party. Coach um brought me up and everything. He's like, man, this kid, Bobby, freshman man, he's young, but but he's going to, he's going to be special. He's going to do something for me. I love this kid like a son, but that kind of like made me like, all right, I gotta, I gotta put on, I gotta do what I gotta do for him because coming up in that program, we know like the background on Hendrickson and everything, we know uh, their camaraderie and everything, but I kind of wanted to do what I could do for the program so we can see as many chips as we can, as we could get. All right. And just continue the legacy basically. Who were the, who are some of the players you played against that you might've had like a hard time guarding or like, like scoring up against like uh you know, once your name was out there and people knew who you were? Um, so we did play, I wouldn't say like a hard time. Um, we did play a team. Let me see. We played a couple crazy teams. We played, um, my freshman year, we played Boston. I want to say Cambridge, Cambridge in Latin. Mm. We played them at the TD Garden and got smacked by 50. Oh, you um, played at TD Garden? Yeah, they probably, I think they was, their starting five is probably, I think they're all D1 right now. Really? They're starting five. Uh, I remember Ja'Kai Dotton, he's at um, Towson. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he graduated yet. But um, they had some like six, eight, like a couple six, eight guys. But man, that game, that was that was a team that that's tough to score on. Just because just I was a younger kid at the time and everything mm-hmm. too, I was a freshman. Um, we played a team my sophomore year in uh, Hawaii. Actually, I think they were the number five team in California, and we ended wow. up and we ended up beating them in Hawaii uh, in one of their tournaments at Puno, and uh, we ended up we ended up doing them in pretty good. But they had like a top prospect or something. He was just a tough guard. He was like just kind of um just kind of like more stocky. So like that brought me into kind of like all right now I gotta like develop my body a little more. I gotta. I got to get bigger. I got to be ready for that when someone puts pressure on me and just use my quickness to their, to, to, to my advantage against their bulkiness. Mm, so it was more, it was more like out of state kids that were. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah no, it was more yeah. out of state. I mean, we played a couple of tough kids in Boston, um, mass New York. Uh, but I mean, I didn't, I don't think I really ever had like a tough, tough time yeah. on any, but no, we definitely played some good competition that we've had. We played a manual quickly. That was a that was a good game. I mean, they beat us at like twenty, but I mean, it was it was good to play against that level of competition. See what's going on out there in Maryland, but um, no, definitely we definitely played against some competition for sure. Manual quickly, man. Yeah, I, me, I'm a huge huge Knicks fan. Like watching them play, yeah. and then um, I forget when. I think you were there too, but at the rec, Jared told me he was like, "Yeah, we played against like Emmanuel quickly," and he told me that he he barely even scored, if that, and he had like thirty assists. Yeah, he had two points and probably like 20 something assists for That's sure. Insane. Yeah, he just dominated the game on the offensive end, just dishing. That's that's pretty that's a cool experience for you too. Like, did you have any other experiences like that? Like kind of um playing up against like player the NBA players that are now or like college D1 guys like out of state. Um, yeah, I mean I play against a lot of a lot of good competition when I just go to pick up runs and everything. Um mm-hmm. 
like I said, I play competition and everything, but it's more mostly just like pickup whenever we're like getting runs out in Boston or getting runs like in the summer or whatever. I mean, just guys coming home from schools and stuff like that. Going back to um, Hendrick and, you know, everyone watching is going to want to know about that buzzer beater, of course, in the double overtime <laughs> in your freshman year, uh, your sophomore yeah. year at CCRI uh, against Mount Pleasant. Um, I was actually at that game. I think I was in like eighth grade, maybe eighth grade or freshman, my freshman year. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, was my, that was my sophomore year. Yeah, right. So, so you're you graduated in 2019, right? Yeah. So I, I was probably, yeah, I was a freshman. Right. Um, so run me through like that game, like the whole game and like what it was like starting the OT and your emotions uh, after the game, of course. All right. So, yeah. So it was, um, I remember that game, like nothing. Um, so yeah. it was like Friday, March playoffs just started. So this is divisions. Um, and like, we try not to, I'm not even going to lie. Like Hendrick and we, they always told us like divisions. After my freshman year, we got smacked against classical in divisions. They were like, don't worry about it because we're gonna beat them in the in the mm. state championship. Yeah. We did. We beat them by 20 because we didn't, we don't, we don't use all our tactics. We don't use all our stuff in right. division. Whatever. So um we came in the game not trying to show them like all our defenses, our one three ones and everything. Cause at the time they had Enoch. Mm-hmm. Um and he was lanky getting buckets and everything like that. So we were kind of worried about him and then the shooters on the side. It was a close game throughout. Um I think we played pretty good as a team, which I remember, but um, I came in, I think I hit like the first three of the game. I hit the first shot. I didn't score like that. I had like a, a lay- then we went into the second half. I had a layup to end the game or a floater. And then it was like double over. I had a floater in overtime and then it was double overtime. And uh, there was like three seconds on the clock. All he had to do was make both free throws. Um, and I personally thought we were only, um, I thought we were down by three because mm. at the time everyone knew I would have taken the, uh, I would have definitely took the layup right. at that time. I wasn't as confident in my shot as I am now, mm-hmm. but um, I knew I had to get a shot off. I've been in the gym. I worked with my coach right now, Jamie Benton. Um, I've been working on this exact footwork with him probably since I was in like fifth grade. So I just took it through my head. I got the ball um, three seconds left, just ball in my right hand, dribbled up the court. Right, left, right, step into it. Three point shot. That place erupted, man. That's that was crazy. Buzzer went off, and they're all like, yo, like jump, jumping on me. I'm like, we got another overtime. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? They're like, you just won the game. Like, look at this. I look up at the scoreboard. I'm like, so like right when you right when you hit the shot, you look um you didn't look up and you, nah, you thought like kept- when I hit the shot, I thought we were in another overtime for sure. Like I thought we were down by three the whole time. Damn. But well, we were, I guess we were just down by two. I shot the three. We won. That's why I had I had no clue. My my Spanish teachers running up to me. <laughs> my <laughs> views and everything. I was that was a good game though for sure. And then we ended up going on and actually winning divisions and states that year. All right. Yeah, you know, it was a good year for you guys. Did you have any like moments like like that one? Kind of maybe like a buzzer beater or like any other memorable moments like through your uh Hendrick and career? Um honestly, it was that was probably one of my best years. My sophomore year, um, I ended up in the championship game for states when we played Shea with Erickson and uh, Abdul Ajia. Uh, they came in, started smacking us 16 to four. Yeah. For And no one expected, they were division two at the time. I yeah, say. We, we played them, but we were division two at the time too. Yeah. So they were, they were a tough team, athletic and everything. Um, But they were making noise in the playoffs coming in. They had the hot hand. So we knew they were going to like be all jacked up and everything, but they came in smacking us by crazy, crazy at the beginning. And then uh, four minutes left in the half, we kind of like turned it on a little bit. Um, everyone was really having like a tough time, like just putting the ball in the basket, really. Uh, even Justin, like free throws, like everyone, yeah. like, like layups. You never see Justin miss layups like that. Yeah. Close to the basket. Like it was, it was a tough game for us, but we got it back on the defensive end. And then coming into the half, I hit a buzzer beater at like almost from like the URI symbol. Mm. Um, and that brought us down. I think that put us down by like four points. And I kind of just got souped and was just like, not nah, Justin, like I got your back. Like we went to the locker room, everyone was like all down and everything. And I'm like, Justin's, Justin's sad. Like, I'm like, yeah, I got you. Mm. I told him, I'm like, yo, we're not losing this game. I'm not, there's, there's no way we're gonna come this far. I'm losing this game. We already, we already do. We had to do the whole season. Let's go get this. We come back in second, second half. I had the 
first nine points of the half. Um, and then we kind of just went on a run and just used our defense. We just had to basically play like a box and one uh, on Erickson. And it was me and Angels switching off on him. But uh, we just really had to slow him down and everything. And then I ended up winning MVP in that game with 21 points. Me and Tyrone both had, I think it was 21 and 20 we both had or something like that. But that was that was kind of really my moment when I was like, nah, like, like I could do this. Yeah, man. Was, Eric, was, Erickson is definitely uh, a tough player because we um, we played against him. I've been playing up against him since like seventh grade because when he yeah, was, I've been, yeah, I've been against him for yeah, a while too. He, I think he stayed back like a year or two, or whatever it was. So yeah. like when I was in eighth grade, he was in eighth grade, but he was already like fifteen, six, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. So for like us to, you know, we had to play at Shea, and you know Shea, like it was like oh, the yeah, court was like this. Cool. There's like cages yeah. up where the seats were, like cool. you know what I mean. Yeah. So. It's already a tough environment to play in because it's so small. But, like, you know, we played him tough, obviously, eighth grade. And he was just, like, way ahead of his his time, it felt like. Because, I well, I didn't really know what his age was, but just a tough player. I mean, how, he scored probably over, like, what, like 2,000 at um, – I think he ended up with, like, 21, 20, 2,200. Yeah. Yeah. But – um, No, yeah, he could, he could score the ball for sure. Yeah, he was definitely probably, like, you know, a tough matchup. But – um. Do you have any, like, uh, more college experiences before, you know, obviously playing at the college level, like, in the championships like URI? Was there anything else uh, that kind of prepared you for the college level? Um, it was kind of really uh, my coach passing on, like, a, worth, a work ethic to me, really. Mm. Um, in high school, my assistant coach, Brett Kearns, uh, he was really in the gym with me every day before practice. We'd be in the gym an hour before practice, half hour, hour after practice. Sometimes we'd be practicing for like two, two and a half, three hours. Mm. Um, but he kind of really put that work ethic in me. Uh, Coach Tom, uh, he was a, a certified trainer and everything. So he really helped me uh, develop my body, like put 10 pounds on in like a month. Um, he helped me He helped me do that over the summer going into my freshman year of college. Um, and that kind of like, it, I was really like, I felt prepared, which and I, st I still do, obviously, but um I feel like they really did a good job helping me out, really getting me on the right track and everything, getting my body right, staying in shape, and just preparing myself to move my game to a higher level. That's good. Do you still train with them and uh, talk to them to this day? Like I, yeah, just I still, I, I'm still in contact with them and everything. It's been tough trying to get in the gym, you know, COVID and everything. Yeah. Uh, it's been tough trying to get in the gym with them because they got their own stuff going on, school and everything. And and I'm at school. We got the schedule. So basically, I just been in the gym with my teammates and everything. Uh, using the shooting gun, trying to get right over there. All right. Yeah. Scheduling is definitely, definitely a hard thing to do, but okay. uh, you know, with everything going on, but um, a lot of the players from like Rhode Island that you played up against, or maybe even like uh, played alongside with like, uh, at, like at Johnson and Wales right now, like Arias, uh, yeah. Raspberry, Ty Jones, he played at North Providence. Like to kind of start off, how did you uh, decide you wanted to play at Wu? And uh, what has the chemistry been like with those kind of guys? Good. Okay. Um, so I ended up at Johnson and Wales um, last last year. I ended up at Johnson and Wales after because I was at URI my freshman year. I had a um, I was in contact with the coaches and everything. I was supposed to be on the team over there. Um, didn't work out. Went to Johnson and Wales this year. I was in contact with Jamie, who was able to make it happen over there. Trying to see what we can do now. Um, with Tyreek, Arius. I mean, I think they everyone's really been working out for the most part. Everyone's been grinding and everything. Arius is he's been developing since he was in high school. That mm -hmm. we've always been going at it since he was actually on my started off playing with me in fourth, fifth grade. And then we became like going head to head all through middle school, going head to head all through high school and everything. Now we're back on the same team. Now we gotta work together. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, it's Tyreek. Tyreek's a great kid too, man. He he's a he's a worker for sure. He got the he got the greatest work ethic, man. Um, I think he's he got a lot better this summer for sure and everything. Um, but I think I think they're both looking to have some pretty good years right now, for That's sure. I, I I think our team all around is looking really really solid. I think uh I think we'll be able to make a run for a little championship this year. There you go. What was what was it like? Um. Yeah, like your freshman year, like before the pandemic, like before there was like restrictions and stuff. So uh, my freshman year, uh, I kind of I kind of actually used that year as like a, a workout 
a workout year because that's when I was supposed to be at. I was at URI my whole year, mm-hmm. kind of just trying to put weight on. I ended up putting like 15 pounds on a muscle and then uh, basically just worked on my game. I kind of just made my shot 10 times more consistent, just worked on off the dribble and everything like that. I kind of just prepared myself coming into Johnson and Wales, really. Um, but yeah, we, I, we actually opened up against URI this year. And then uh, we play Brown second game. So yeah, that's we'll regular season. Yeah, yeah, this is November six. We open up a, no November fourth. I want to say we play, play at URI. Yeah, and then we play um Brown at Brown the sixteenth. Wow, that's pretty cool. You'll be playing up against Bassey. Do you know if he's been out? Yeah, so so I think right now he's gonna take the year as a red shirt. I've mm-hmm. been talking to him a little bit. Um. And that's, that's actually what I plan on doing my freshman year when I was there. Uh, but I think that'll be good for him so he can develop and everything because he still could have done a year of prep school if he wanted to this year, but he ended up just going straight to college. And I think that that was the better decision so he could uh, get his body. Right, be, yeah, yeah. Be ready, learn the system, and then he can come in and already be one of the one of the players on the on the team in that camaraderie. Yeah, but I've been trying to get in contact with him because I want to, you know, talk to him. Yeah, for uh, sure. but you know if you ever get in contact with him just let him know like come nah, up yeah. on camp's corner because this yeah for sure go back to like jay woo and stuff um how did how did the pandemic kind of affect you and how did it affect the team and like the restrictions and all that kind of stuff after that after like uh that was last year right yeah, yeah. so how yep. was that like yeah it was like a year year and a half ago so um going into johnson and wales we didn't even know if we were gonna have a season or not um but it started off actually all last year. We started off in September. We start or September, October. We start October 15th. That's what it was again last year. We started off with um, two man pods. So it would be eight people in a workout and then it would be to a basket. So we would only be able to do shooting drills. Oh, yeah. I think you told me that. Yeah. Work. So it was literally it was two to it was two to a basket. We would do shooting competitions. Just try. It was more of like like uh like workouts, like like training, really. Um, And we did that all the way up until Thanksgiving. And we came back, did it before Christmas break. And then we came back and got the OK around January or February. We got the OK to play a game. If we wanted to get like a scrimmage in, we played one. Uh, we played one game last year, um, just to get our feet wet, see how we could do as a team and everything. And now, now our team's completely different. Honestly, we, I think we probably lost like four guys, five guys, but um, we got some new faces, some young legs, some old legs. <laughs> but uh, good luck to you. I mean, I, I definitely want to come out to some games. Definitely send me uh, your schedule. To kind of wrap it up, if you were to if you were to kind of try to get in contact with somebody, who would you want to see on the podcast from like maybe from Rhode Island could it be out of state any, anywhere? Because I've been trying to get in contact with a lot of people, but you know stuff uh, hasn't been really from Rhode, Island, from Rhode Island, that'd be cool if you could talk to David. Um, mm. Bassy would be a good kid. Mm. Uh, I know you talked to Justin already, right? Um, yeah. Maybe maybe try and talk to uh, Keegan. Keegan Records. He's the. He, oh yeah 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 somewhere right now d1 too but yeah him cole swider like if you want to you could probably reach out to them too for sure i'm sure they're i'm sure they'd be happy to, to do a little interview with you for sure yeah I, I appreciate you coming on you know i know schedules and stuff has been really busy but um yeah sir appreciate it man shout out cam's quarter appreciate it bro thank you i'll be in touch for sure and that wraps up episode 10 guys i hope you guys enjoyed uh, my little interview with bobby be sure to subscribe check out all my social media links in the description Guys, again, thank you for tuning in.